Hi, I'm Cole from the Storytelling with Data team. Today, I'd like to share a simple strategy with you for making better graphs, slides, and presentations. And that is to talk through your materials out loud. This is especially useful if you're going to be presenting your materials in a virtual setting or in person in a meeting, because this practice of talking through things out loud, if we pay attention to it, is going to highlight refinements that we can make to our materials so that they better support us through that process. Turns out there's also some benefits for the scenario where we're not presenting live. We're sending things around to be consumed on their own. So this process of talking through things out loud can help in that scenario too. Take a look at an example. So imagine that I am an analyst in human resources, and I've been asked by my client team to provide an update on time to hire in their organization. So let's just take a look at the slide I've created to do this. I'm going to jump in and talk through it out loud in the same way that I would if I were presenting it to someone else. As I do, I'm going to pay attention to the points that I want to make. So let's start off just by introducing the topic, right? We're going to be talking about time to hire. Uh, turns out it has increased over time. So today I want to frame a discussion on whether and what we want to do from here. So time to hire is, let's see, and I always forget this part, so I want to give myself some visual cues to remind uh, on that. Uh, time to hire is the number of days between the job being posted and the offer accept. Uh, we measure that in days, and so that's actually what's shown on our y-axis, zero days down at the bottom, up to 90 days to hire at the top. X-axis is months over time of the past calendar year, starting in January and going through December. So let's pay attention first to this goal line. Uh, 60 days to hire is our goal, which means we want to see data generally falling below that. So we're taking less than 60 days to hire. Uh, if we look first at our external hires, so these are people who are being hired from the outside. First half of the year, we see that mostly below goal, but generally increasing uh, or above goal in June. And then it's been pretty noisy the second half of the year, above goal in August and again in November. It turns out when we dig into the data that months having higher time to hire, the candidates who are hired then typically have more interviews. So that may be something worth discussing. We shift our attention to internal hires. So those are those coming through external, excuse me, internal transfers. Uh, we see it's below goal, uh, but generally increasing over the course of the year. So with that context, we can frame the discussion we want to have. Maybe we set some guidelines around maximum number of interviews, or there might be some improvements to consider to the internal transfer process. So I've talked through my slide. It works okay as is, right? particularly in the scenario we just went through where I was giving you visual cues by physically drawing on the slide. If I'm time constrained or if this isn't a high stakes scenario, that's probably good enough. That's not the case though, right? If this is important, there are some refinements I can make to help my materials support me better. In particular, there are three things that I want to change. First off, I'm going to use smarter titles. When I do that, I can both prompt myself to make sure I don't forget anything important or stumble over definitions. This also works as a great priming function for my audience so that they know what to expect. Second thing I will do is make it clear where to look. I'm going to do that through some light animation uh, so that things appearing on the slide are going to garner attention from my audience. And then finally, I'm going to introduce some sparing color. Uh, these will work as verbal cues as I'm talking through the information live. This is also going to be helpful in that static view that I send out to be consumed on its own so I can make some visual connections between the annotations that I'll add there, the words, and the data itself. 
take a look at what this could look like. So today we're here to talk about time to hire. It has increased, and so I want to frame up a discussion on whether and what actions we may want to take as a result of that. So time to hire, just put everybody on the same page, is the time between our official posting of a position and offer accept. Our y-axis shows time to hire in days, and we're looking at months of the year across our x-axis. So the goal is we hire in less than 60 days. So we're going to be happy about data points that fall below that dotted line. Actually, if we focus first on external time to hire, it increased relatively steadily the first half of the year, actually to above goal in June. And the latter half of the year, it's been up, it's been down. Uh, it has been above goal again in September and November. When we take a closer look at the data, months having higher time to hire tend to have candidates hired who've had a greater number of interviews. Pushing that to the background, let's layer on our internal time to hire. So this is the time it takes to get internal transfers into new roles. And we see all those points fall below 60, our goal, which is great. Uh, but notice there is a general increase that we see in time to hire over the course of the year. So let's talk about what we want to do next. Does it make sense to introduce some guidelines for our maximum number of interviews, other efficiency gains we might look for in the internal process? What would you like to do? So notice how I was able to make just some slight changes to my visuals to make it really clear to my audience uh, and to help me out as I presented live. And now in the case where we're sending something around to be consumed on its own, I might annotate the important points, the takeaways that I want to highlight. Notice the color that I introduced uh, helps me do that in a way that works better for my audience as well. There you have it, my top tip for designing better slides. Talk through them out loud. Use that process to identify improvements to make so that your materials better support you and you can better communicate to your audience. By the way, the example we just looked at is from my second book, Storytelling with Data, Let's Practice. And it is actually from exercise 6.6. Uh, differentiate between live and standalone stories. So you can take a look at that, download the data, try it out yourself. And there's another reference of my solution in the book as well. Thanks very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.